on one of my other videos where I talked about the comparison of an actual real life example of a motor and prop combo comparing smaller diameter rotors with high KV with larger diameter rotors with smaller KV a number of subscribers had asked the question why didn't you show the same motor with two different size props and there's a very good reason for that each motor comes with a data sheet or should come and here's an image from uh, the Hobby King website for one of the motors up there and as you can see here, it actually gives a recommended prop size for this motor for both a 3S and a 4S LiPo battery. Now, in the demonstration that I did, I was actually running the, uh, the proper motor, rotor and battery combo in each instance. And you can't just go and change your rotor diameter or pitch without it impacting significantly the power system on your quad or helicopter. If we just talk first of all about the very simple um, calculation of how you work out how much thrust is generated and then we'll actually look at some examples. And thank you to Lucian Miller um, who actually helped me understand this when I was trying to figure it out um, a couple of years ago. Very roughly the thrust that a motor and prop will generate is a function of the square of their diameter times the pitch of the rotor blades times the motor kv times the voltage battery pack now that might sound a bit complicated but don't worry we'll actually look at a couple of examples in a second so let's look at a real world example i've just replaced these blades that were on um, this model this is actually the model that was used for the hover testing for the efficiency and what i've done is i've replaced these blades which were 10 by 4.5 with this Graupner blade, which is 10 by 5. So it's an additional half inch of pitch. Now, if we imagine what's that going to do to the amount of power that the system is going to pull, if we look at the top numbers, the diameter of the blade is the same. It's 10 inches. The KV is the same. It's the same battery. Everything's identical. But the pitch has increased from four and a half inches to five inches. And that has resulted in an 11.1% increase in the amount of thrust that those blades are going to generate. So just by increasing the pitch of the blade by half a percent, I'm going to be pulling about 11% more current from the setup. Now that's really important to note, because half an inch doesn't sound like anything on pitch, but if I was running at 18 amps for the model, I would be running at almost 20 amps now on the same model. And if I was running a 20 amp speed controller, I'd be knocking on the door of the rated capacity of that ESC and I'd be starting to get into trouble. If we look similarly at the impact of changing the diameter of the blades, so we'll assume and pretend that we're going to replace the 10 by 4.5 and I couldn't get 10 by 4.5, so I've replaced them with 11 by 4.5 inch blades. Everything else remains the same, but by increasing the diameter of the blades by just 10%, i.e. another inch, I'm getting a 21% increase in the amount of current and power that's going to be drawn. So in that instance, if I was running at 18 amps before, I'm now going to be running at about 22. So again, if I was running a 20 amp speed controller, I would absolutely be in trouble. So hopefully that's been useful for those of you out there who are thinking of changing the props on particular motors. My advice would be use the prop that the manufacturer recommends for the battery that you're using. If you're going to change from 3S to 4S, then normally that would necessitate a reduction in the prop size. But always make sure that you're running the right prop for the job and you won't stress the motor, the ESC, and you'll limit the amount of failures that you have. Hopefully that makes sense. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe and happy flying.